Hey guys, what's up? It's Mr. Crayfish and welcome back to my modding tutorials. In the previous tutorial, we updated to 1.10.2. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create tile entities. And specifically, we're going to be making the jar, the block jar we created, to be able to store our crackers. Because we want a place to, we want a place to store our crackers, you know? We need to keep them fresh and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be doing a tile entity for that because we need to store data such as um, how many crackers are actually stored in the jar at the moment. Now I want to remind you guys that I do have a Patreon so if you want to support this series and get access to the source code of these modding tutorials click on the link below and pledge at least one dollar. Uh, a lot of people have already and I thank you guys so much. I'm going to read out the list of people that have supported so far at the end of this video today. But let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new package here. So go right click our main package here, go new package, and then at the end here do dot tile entity. So we're going to have a package to separate all our tile entities out. So we're going to right click tile entity, go new class, and then we're going to call this tile entity jar. Click finish. And then what we need to do is here is extends tile entity highlight over that uh, make sure we save that first and then import net.minecraft.tile entity now we're not going to work on the tile entity yet what we need to actually do is bind the tile entity to the block so what we need to do is go into our block.jar class and at the end here what we need to do is implement a interface called implements uh, i tile oopsie i tile entity provider i think that's what it is highlight over that yes i tile entity provider and then we need to add the unimplemented methods so we get a method down here called create um, new tile entity what we need to do is simply just return um, that new class we created here, so tile entity jar. So we just do new tile entity, oops, entity jar. Then make sure you import that. Save. Then we need to go back to um, our tutorial class here. And then under modcrafting.register, we're going to do game registry. dot register register tile entity so we need to pop in our class here so we're going to do tile entity jar dot class and then for the ID what we're going to do is call reference dot mod ID plus tile entity jar so that's going to guarantee like you don't want to make sure we want to make sure we have a unique ID so we're going to prefix it with our mod ID and then put tile entity jar at the end here. So basically we've bound the tile entity to this block here and then we've also registered it because you need to register it or it won't actually work. We're going to go back to our tile entity jar here and we're going to create a couple of properties. Oh well actually we only need to create one. So we need to create some a variable that's going to store how many uh, crackers are actually in the jar at the moment. So private int crackers cracker cracker count, and then we call it equals zero. We're going to initialize it straight away to zero. So that's, this is going to keep track of how many crackers are in the jar. Now we're going to create a couple of methods here. One's going to be public void add cracker. And what we're actually going to do is uh, change that void to a boolean. And then uh, what that's going to do is when we call this method here, it's going to say, okay, did we actually add a cracker? Like, uh, were we able to? Because um, let's say the cracker jar is full, we would want to return false here because uh, we weren't able to actually add a cracker. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're gonna we're gonna create um, an amount here of how many crackers we can actually store 
inside of the jar. And I'm thinking uh, we're going to have a maximum of... Now, we're going to... Now you need to decide on how many crackers maximum you actually want to uh, like be able to store in this jar. I'm going to be choosing eight, mainly because we're going to be creating a special render which allows you to see the crackers inside the jar. And eight is actually um, probably a reasonable amount. So let's say if cracker count is less than eight, then we're going to do cracker count plus plus and we're actually going to have to wrap that inside of a uh, brackets there in a second uh, and then under here we're going to do return true and then at the bottom we just need to do return false so let's say if the cracker count is more than or is equal to eight um, then it's going to skip this and just return false because it's already full already so we can't add a cracker so here we're, we're saying if it's less than 8, then we can add a cracker to it. Now we'll come back to this in a second because we do have something we've got to add into here. I'm just not sure right now if we actually do need to add it, but we'll, we'll decide later on. <coughs> we also need to create a method to remove a cracker. So we're going to do public uh, void remove cracker. And then what we need to do is if cracker count is more than zero, so that if there is a cracker inside of there, what we're going to do is world obg spawn entity in world. So we need to spawn an item in new entity item. And then we need to take in um, this uh, third constructor here for entity item, so we need to pass in a world object. So world obg, that's the one. This world obg object is from the tile entity class, by the way. Then we just need to do pos dot get x, and then we're going to add um, a half onto it, so it's actually in the center of the block. For the z, we're going to do the same. So get z plus. Um, 0 0.5 and then we're going to do pos.get y and then add 1 so it spawns basically on the top of the jar and then finally here we just need a new item stack and then pass in our cracker item whoopsie not furniture uh, mod items and then put in cracker there And then we also need to take the cracker count down one because obviously one just came out. So cracker count minus minus. Now we're going to make this so it only gets called on the server side. So if world obg is remote, and then we're going to put an exclamation. So if it's not remote, so a remo if if it's is if it is remote, it means it's a client side. If it's not remote, it means it's server side. So we're going to wrap that in. Um, that if statement there and then we're also we're probably also going to do the same here for this so if is remote uh, don't worry about adding that in that can just still be at the bottom so we only want to update it on the server side and then we're going to update it for client now we actually need to save this crack account here uh, to file so we're going to override a couple of methods here so save, uh, what is it, write to nbt is one method we're going to override. And then the other one is um, um, what is it? Read from nbt. So this first one here is writing to the nbt. So we're going to go ahead and what we need to do is copy that there. We're going to put that at the start because what this needs to do, this super dot write mbt uh, writes basically the position of this tile entity, so the coordinates, and then also what else does it write? So it writes the id and also the x, y, and z position of it. Then under it, what we're going to do is do compound dot write um, set integer. And then we're going to call this 
um, cracker count as the key and then the value we need to save is the cracker count and then we're simply going to return compound pretty sure that wasn't like that but oh well and then read from MBT here we need to just read this value back in so when we actually load um, our world up or you go into new chunks this here will get called and we'll update um, the tile entity correctly so we first have super dot read from MBT at the top here leave that there all we need to do is go this dot crack account equals compound dot get integer cracker count so that's how we save data in these files there and I want to make sure I do the right syntax here or the right um, formatting I mean not syntax and we're just for consistency change that to this dot crack account so these are all the methods we're going to need at the moment what we're going to do is go back into our block jar here and we're going to override a method called get uh, no not get on block activated so we're going to do this under add collision box here so under there do on block activated now uh, something I didn't mention uh, what you want to do is press control space and that will actually bring up this menu here so let's just get rid of that again I've been doing this throughout the whole thing so control space and then on block activated once you see it there click on it and then it will come up here I'm going to put that onto a uh, its own line and then here we're just going to return true so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get an instance of our tile entity so it's pretty simple what we're going to do is go tile entity tile entity equals equals world in dot get tile entity at position so pass it now uh, position here into that um, argument then we want to check if this entity is a tile entity jar so we go tile entity or if tile entity is instance of tile entity jar so that way we guarantee we know it is a tile entity jar because sometimes it can stuff up and there might be a different entity there we don't want to cause any errors then we're just going to call this tile entity jar equals and then do a cast here so we're going to do a brackets and then type in tile entity jar after that put our tile entity instance there and that will cast it to a tile entity jar so now we can actually call the methods from inside of here now what we need to do is check what item we're currently right clicking this block with so this is what this method does is it will get called when you right click the block so we have in our parameters up here an, an item stack here which is held item so what we're going to do is check if held item dot get item oops get item equals equals mod items dot cracker pretty simple if it is we're going to do jar dot add cracker and what we're going to do is actually put this in an if statement so if jar dot add cracker we're going to do held item dot stack size minus minus now I should mention we should actually wrap this inside of a if weld in dot is remote and then put exclamation out there because we want this to be server side only put that there and then boom so this will happen on the server side only uh, we can actually go back here and get rid of this so we don't actually need that so get rid of that that's better go back to our block jar here so if the held item is mod item or is the cracker item then we're going to add if it does add a cracker then we're going to decrease the stack size by one because it's added a cracker into the jar if it's not an if it's not um, a if, if the held item is not a cracker then what we're actually going to do uh, actually what we need to do is actually check if we're actually holding an item so if held item doesn't equal to null because we might be using just our fist you know so we need to make sure we check for that and it doesn't 
cause any errors because if we if it was no and we called this get item it's going to throw an error and then here we're actually what we're going to do is at the end of that we're going to return true then at the bottom of this if statement here where we have if held item doesn't equal to null we're simply going to do jar dot remove cracker because what this basically says here is okay do we have a held item if we do let's go ahead if the item that we're holding is a cracker keep going if we can add a cracker then we're going to decrease that stack size that will, we're going to add a cracker to the jar and then we're going to discrete decrease the stack size in our hand and then return that we successfully completed that if any of these here fail so if we don't have a held item if we if the item is not a cracker or if we can't add um, a cracker to the jar it's gonna go down to the bottom here and um, it's going to remove a cr actually that's a bad idea <laughs> whoopsie oh no now that's the right way to do it we'll put that there and then we're just gonna remove a cracker and then that handles itself perfectly fine now we're going to quickly test this out so it should work straight away um, you just won't see anything in the jar it would just be like give it will just be like taking items away from us and then spawning them back in so we're going to go ahead and test this out now so we're going to place our cracker jar down and then if we go ahead and hopefully this works we get our crackers here and we right click it it should take one away from us each time we right click it and if we hopefully when we right click this it's going to spawn the item back in look at that so it looks like we're getting them out of the jar again and that should be it so let's put 8 into it now so we should go down to 56 Ooh. so as you can tell when it's full there it will actually pop out uh, one of the crackers so right now it is full if we go ahead and right click it it's going to spawn all of them out look at that and then we got them back so that is going to be it for this tutorial today. In the next episode, we're going to go over how you can actually render the cracker inside the jar. We might also run into some problems as well with uh, updating the graphics that you'll see later on. Uh, but right now, it seems to be working all fine. Also, remember to check out the Patreon if you want to get access to all the source code. Pledge at least $1 um, per month. And then you'll get access to the source code. But that's it. Make sure you go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all my tutorials, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Now, I said at the end of this video, I'm going to go through a list of the people that have supported me on Patreon so far. But before I do, I just want to thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me that you guys are enjoying learning these tutorials as much as I am creating them and that you feel the need to go that one step further and donate some money to me. It means so much. Now, there are so many people on Patreon, it's going to take me a while to go through everybody. So what I'm going to do is just put a list of all your guys' names on the screen right now. If you see yours, thank you so much. Now, if you're not a Patreon supporter, there is a link below as always, so you can go to my Patreon um, and pledge some money to keep this series going. So hopefully you saw your name in that clip there. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys for the next modding tutorial. Bye.